Something we talk about a lot at Loop is the power of a really good digital twin. Uh, sadly, we can't show you most of our work because it's secret, but we've done some internal demos and now we've got a tutorial to show you how to get started with your own digital twin using some of our tools. Let's check it out. So let me show you what we'll be building today. The example we've come up with is a Festo linear actuator, which we got the model from Festo's website. It's a really nice looking model. And we have a PLC program in uh, Twincat that's communicating with Omniverse. And that's what's driving the actuator. Now it's worth mentioning the real actuator uses IO link. Over here, we have just a really simple program to generate a number for positional feedback and use that to just see this move. Were this a real project, this would be positional feedback from IO link from that controller. But this gives us a way to play with it and Sam and show you how it works. Um, so let's dig into that and how you can get started. Okay, so here's our project folder. We have a PLC project folder and the digital twin folder. Inside here, I've got our CAD we downloaded. Now you can take um, this GLB file we got directly into Omniverse. Uh, there are a few things I wanted to do to it first that were convenient to do in Blender. So I'll just briefly show you what I did. Sometimes you may want to do a bit of prep work to your model to make it easier to work with in Omniverse. In this case, I noticed that this main container was scaled and some of these um, components within that container uh, had different locations. And uh, depending on how you're working with your model, it may be convenient to sort of neutralize those to be at zero. And in Blender, that's really easy. I can select all these components, go to Object, Apply, All Transforms. And now if we click through again, Main is at one, and these are all at zero. Uh, if you're going to move this, you may assign it to a position value read from the PLC. Then you have less translation to do to maintain that initial offset. So it's worth mentioning that if you're going back and forth with CAD a lot, you may need to do these steps again every time you bring in an updated model. Um, so it's worth thinking about um, which changes make the most sense for you to be doing every time. Um, but in this case, I felt like this made it easier to work with an Omniverse, so it was worth doing. And lastly, we export a USD, and then we can bring that into Omniverse. Okay, so let's get our extensions set up. If you open Isaac Sim and go to Windows, Extensions, and search for Loop, you'll see one of our PLC extensions. Uh, so go ahead and enable this and click Auto Load. Auto Load means it'll start running as soon as you open Isaac Sim. Then we're going to write one more extension. So we'll use this one in our new extension. Uh, this one reads and writes data from the PLC and to the PLC. And then the one we're going to write will use that data to do things to the model and to decide to write things back to the PLC. So uh, the one we're about to write is specific for our digital twin. And uh, Isaacson makes it easy to get started. If you go to Isaac Utils and generate extension templates, this is a little bit of UI to help you make the package for your extension. So if we uh, use loaded scenario template, it's going to be the best one for today, and choose a path, a title, and description, hit generate, it'll make um, the files we need to start writing our extension. Okay. Uh, and then if you see this error, just make a note, you may have to take that slash off the end of the path for it to work. Hit generate extension. And now it's created all the files we need to get started. OK, so once you've generated your extension, if you go back to the extensions manager, uh, we can tell Isaac Sim where to look for your custom one. If you go to this hamburger menu, settings, and then add a path. So you click this and then type in a path. This is uh, telling Isaac Sim to look for extensions here, custom user extensions. It's a path. Uh, one directory up from what I think of, I wanted to put it in my digital twin folder, but I actually needed to tell Isaac Sim to look one directory up. Uh, so if you have issues with dependencies um, showing up, that may just be because you've gone one level too deep in the this these search paths. Um, once uh, that path is correct, if you go back to third party under user, you should see your new extension. Congratulations. And now to edit that code, or a nice little shortcut, there's a VS Code logo here. And if you have that installed, you can click that and it should open up that folder, which is really convenient because you're going to be going back and forth. Um, you can also set up a Python debugger, um, which can be very convenient as you start developing more and more uh, aspects of your extension. Here's what the generator made. We have a docs folder, data, config, CAD, which is actually something I added. And then this folder, which has all our code in it. So let's go ahead and jump in here, and we'll need to remove some of the sample code that um, won't be relevant, for example. 
So if you open up uibuilder.py, there's some example code we'll want to take out of here. In this uh, version, you can see they're loading a different robot into the scene to demo some things, so we can get rid of some of this code that we don't need for our digital twin. Now that you've removed the robot and some of the other sample things in the scene that was provided with the template, um, we can start adding our own USD to the scene. So in setup scene, we can add a reference to our USD. Now I'm going to do it. And while you're working on an extension, if uh, it's not running for some reason, it's a good idea to just pull up the console to see what your errors are. Um, see, I accidentally uh, put one of my parentheses in the wrong place here. And down here, I missed a named argument here. So uh, if you're having issues, definitely pull up the console to see what you're missing. It's really easy to make a mistake, and this will point you right to it. OK, so now it's time to combine these two extensions. You might be wondering, how does that work? So uh, we've already loaded this bridge extension, and if you open it, um, it would have already been enabled. I'd disable it so we can show you. But I've got the PLC net ID typed in here for my simulated PLC. And once I hit enable, you can see it's connected. We're not reading any variables yet. We haven't requested it. So this is already running. And our other extension here is running and has loaded this, um, this actuator model. So now we need to connect them. So let's do that. So we're going to make an instance of the manager in our custom extension. This is going to where the extensions get connected, so to speak. We're going to get the extension path for the bridge extension. So we'll do that using that similar API call we used before, get extension path from name. And then we'll feed in the name of that extension, which is this. Then we'll append that to our system path. So we've already imported sys, sys.path.append and extension path. Now we can import um, the bridge. So from loop.simulation. Uh, now we'll make an instance of that class. And then we'll set up two callbacks. One is run on initialization, and one is run anytime we get a message from the PLC. So we'll set those up. So register init callback. And we'll make a function to pass in there. So we'll do. And then we'll register one more callback for the cyclic call. So when we get messages uh, back from the PLC. So that's register data callback on message. And now we need to actually make those. So we'll define those here. For the init callback, we want to create a list of variables that we're going to read from the PLC and then register that with the manager. So we'll make a list here. A little bit of a silly list because it's going to have one thing in it. Position feedback just in one program. Uh, if this was in a fub, you'd have the fub name dot this variable. You may have more variables. Right now we just have one, so it doesn't need to be its own list. You could just do it in line. But it'll, as your program grows, it's nice to have the list already there. And add cyclic read variables. Variables. For on message, um, this event data structure has the variables that have been run from the PLC. So we want to save those in some local variable. So we might make, say, actuator position, and then on message, we'll populate that local variable with the data from the PLC. So to get the data out of the event, it's event.payload, and then it's a dictionary of dictionaries. First we want data, and now we're sort of in the namespace of our variables. If 
so to speak. So we can get main, and then we can get position feedback. Okay, so now we're reading every time there's a new message from the PLC, we're looking up this variable and seeing uh, setting its value to this uh, variable that's on our class. It wouldn't be a bad idea to check if that exists before using these keys, but for the simple example, we'll just leave it like this. So if we go back to Isaac Sim and open the PLC extension, um, and enable it. Now we can see we are reading that variable from the PLC. Uh, it's not changing right now. So if I go to Twincat and trigger, let's see, give this really simple little program a value. Oh, look at that. We can see the value changing. Um, that's moving really fast. We'll slow that down. It gets me every time. Okay, okay so if we slow it down, it's a little more reasonable speed. So this is our simulated position feedback from our actuator. And this is just running in main. Really simple example just to make some numbers move for the purposes of this demo. OK, so now uh, if we load our actuator, it's here. But alas, not moving yet. But we're going to do that right now. Handy little tip. Uh, if you're trying to find something in your scene, if you see it in the stage hierarchy here, select it and hit F the viewport will frame it for you, which is really helpful. So let's make a variable to capture the part of the model that we want to manipulate. So in our init, we'll define actuator model. And it's tempting to do the initialization here, but I've run into issues when I've done that. So we'll actually want to do it in setup scene. So in here, now we will get this part of the model as an X form prim. So this class takes a parameter, which is a prim path to that part of the model. Um, we'll want to get this from the model when it's loaded in our Isaac Sim stage. So if I use our extension to load the model, then go in and click on the part we wanted to move. And I can just move it just to confirm. Yeah, that's the one. Um, that's the mesh. We'll use this X form here. And you can right click on it and copy print path. You see, that's the, what we just copied is right here. And paste that in. So now we are getting the model um, when the scene is set up. And this is what we're going to use to adjust position. So now if we go down to on physics step, in here we'll take that model. So, um, and get its position by saying, we'll use again, model dot get local pose. And then we'll take that position, which is a list, and we'll get, we want to manipulate Y. So if we go back, I'll show you, this is Y. That's the direction we want to, the axis we want to be moving this in. So if we go back to code, that would, zero is X, one is Y. And now this will equal actuator position from the PLC. Uh, now, spoiler, this is actually in millimeters where we're moving this in our scene in meters. So we need to convert by going divide by a thousand. Whenever you do this kind of thing, it's a great idea to leave a comment to remember why it's being adjusted that way. So convert meters, millimeters. And then now we need to set on the model. So take model, set local pose, and we'll set it translation to actuator position. So we get the current position and rotation in local space. That's important. And then uh, for this model, it's important to do that. Um, taking the Y parameter, maybe we can make just a little note for ourselves here. And then setting the pose based on the modified value. So we just modified Y and then set it again. Uh, there are different ways to do this. Uh, this uh, works well for just a single 
part of a model like this that we want to manipulate. If you had lots of objects you're changing, you may want to use a different strategy than get and set local posts, but this will work for this example. Okay, so this is the exciting part. This is where we're going to see this digital twin actually move. But let's do a quick little check. Okay, so the one thing we need to change, if you notice, we're moving in Y. This is positive, this is negative and our stroke on this actuator is 200 millimeters, zero to 200 is the way we've defined it. So we actually need to move negative. So if I set this back and uh, we go back to our code, we'll just need one more multiplier in here. And this isn't something you'd want to change in the PLC code, assuming you like that definition of where zero is. Um, so we'll just make another note here. And we'll go back. So if we select the translation stage, we can see this is in meters. PLC units are in millimeters, so it's being converted correctly. And it's moving. Um, so just to show you, if we happen to get the TwinCat project open, and we say move it half as fast, And there we go, now it's moving half as fast. So this is a really basic example. I'll just show you a couple other cool things we could do. Um, we might like a, to have a button on our extension to trigger the movement to happen or not. So let's add that. In this part of the extension UI, we'll add another button. So do yourself dot. And then we'll give it a callback. So clicked. And then we'll define that callback. So we need to read that variable just like we did for position feedback into some local variables. So, um, We'll default to true, and then we'll assign that in on message. So a similar syntax, so data um, main. And then if we take a quick peek at TwinCat, we just have active in main. Again, really simple just to show you how this all connects. So active. Okay, and then in our callback for when that button is clicked, um, which, let's see, I need to add this. To implement this callback, we will set our movement activated variable. We'll just toggle it, really simple. And then we also need to write this to the PLC. So here we'll go to our manager and this, the function is write variable. And the first argument is the string name of the variable. So main.active and then a value. So self.move activated that Boolean. Let's save that and test it. And if we go back to Isaac Sim and reset, uh, now we have this button under run scenario activate movement. You see, notice the active value true here. If I click it, it goes false. This stops moving. And just uh, to pull this alongside twin cat. So there's our active value. And when I click this button, this is setting this to true. So now we're both reading and writing variables from the PLC. You could use buttons like this to control a state machine or any number of things. So I'd like to show you one more trick that can be really useful with digital twins, and that's the use of cameras. So we've just been using the default perspective camera, but let's say we'd like to put a camera essentially on this part of the machine that's moving. So um, let's say this is a view we like, or maybe we'll go rotate like this. We just want it to be on uh, moving with the part of the machine that moves. 
So there's a cool uh, feature, Create From View. This will make a camera from your current viewpoint, viewport camera. So we have that new camera now, and we are looking through it. Um, I'll just go back to this perspective camera for now and drag this inside here. And, you know, we might call this like process camera or something. And now if we go up to the camera menu and switch to process camera, we're actually moving with the slide and we can, you know, adjust the camera angle. Um, and this can be really useful for um, viewing different parts of the machine. Um, we can even pull up multiple viewports and see two angles at the same time, which I'll do that. So here's a second viewport. And in this viewport, we'll do just the regular perspective camera. Um, those two are pretty similar, but um, maybe we'll do top. Maybe we'll do perspective, but we'll look over here. Um, so this is one way you can use cameras. That's kind of neat. And just to close out this tutorial, uh, I'd like to show you a bit more about our knife grinder demo. Um, that digital twin we've released a few videos about and just show you some of the things we've added to a more featured digital twin. So in Omniverse, we have this knife grinder extension and we have controls for the state of the PLC. So this is for our Piper state machine. We can start and restart it. Um, we also have some different camera views you can switch to, which can be useful for evaluating a CNC program. Um, you can even be inside the grinding wheel. So, you know, cool things with digital twins, you can put cameras where you would probably never want one in real life or would be difficult or, and this would all be filled with coolant and you couldn't see it um, on the actual machine. Um, we also had some um, features to, uh, if you jog this around, you could save positions and then generate G-code programs from that. And if we hop over to the code for the knife grinder digital twin, uh, we can see, first of all, in the callbacks for the PLC manager, we have many more variables. These are actual axis variables, which is very different from the counter we were using in our linear actuator example. These have all the parameters and limits of the real axes. Um, so they're much higher fidelity, act, pause, actual position, right? Um, then we also have the overall state machine. Um, and the value of what state we're in currently. Uh, we can write commands to change that. And on message here, we're reading in all those motor positions, spindle speed, spindle angle, um, and machine state, which we're converting to an enum. And then if we go into the physics step, uh, we're setting poses on many different things. We're also, again, uh, updating some UI elements for what state we're in, making some helpful messages for the user. Uh, there's code in here to change cameras um, based on, yeah, which button you click from the UI, you can choose from a number of cameras. Um, at the top, we're calling out those cameras from the USD, um, um, those paths so we can get the prims. Um, so there's a whole world of things you can do with the digital twin. Just wanted to give you a sense of how a project might look when uh, it's evolved a bit more. You know, we're super passionate about digital twins at Loop. We think they're such a key part of making revolutionary software for machines. Um, so that's why we've made these extensions and made them open source. You can use them in your projects. You can contribute to them. Um, they're on our GitHub. Also, if you want to connect with us, we're at loop.team is our website. And we also have a group called the Society of Automation Software Engineers. We have a Slack. We talk about PLCs, digital twins, all sorts of cool automation stuff. Thanks for checking out our video and we'll see you in the next one.